Not so long ago, these babies might have died from the things that too often kill children here in Senegal. Dysentery, yellow fever, and especially malnutrition. Malnutrition is a pandemic problem in West Africa. As the West Africa Director of Church World Service, Lowell Fugley, an American living in Senegal, has seen the ravages of malnutrition. Some countries, one child out of four does not reach the age of five years, dying due to malnutrition or, or diseases brought on by malnutrition. Worldwide, half a million children go blind every year just due to lack of vitamin A. Ça dépend des périodes. Generally, we might see between 20 and 30 children in a day. Madame Terenege Sako runs a pediatric center in Bignona, Senegal. One thing we have noticed is that right now, there's much less malnutrition than there was before. Madame Sako says the reason for less malnutrition is a tree called Moringa. Some people call it a miracle tree. There's less malnutrition now because we discovered Moringa and all of its virtues. The leaves themselves contain ounce per ounce, about three times the iron you find in spinach, four times the vitamin A you'll find in carrots, four times the calcium you find in milk, protein, all the essential amino acids. Its leaves, fruit, seeds, even the flowers are all edible and highly nutritious. From the seeds, you can extract a very high quality vegetable oil. The seed kernel powder can be ground up and used to purify water. Foundations, universities, and companies from all over the world are researching Moringa's potential applications. And U.S. foundations like Andrew Mellon, the National Geographic Society, and the National Science Foundation are all participating in Moringa research. Research is one thing, but Fugli says that here in Senegal, Moringa can be the difference between life and death. This child you see here was brought to us by his mother two years ago in a very severe state of malnutrition, like a skeleton. His bones were just standing out and his mother was certain the baby was going to die. But we advised to take Moringa. The child did recover and now he's in excellent health. When a mother arrives with a malnourished child here, first we weigh the child and take his temperature and do a general examination. If he is suffering from a particular disease, we will treat that disease with medicines. And then we will counsel the mother to put the child directly on Moringa. The mother will thereafter return with the baby periodically for checkups. And we find that Moringa not only does it rapidly cure malnutrition, but it also seems to have a beneficial effect on many other maladies. Fugli's mission is to promote Moringa as part of the national diet. We did a pilot project here in Senegal for two years, training health workers, training villagers, and how to use the tree, how to grow the tree. And through this project, we demonstrated very conclusively that in fact, these leaves are an extremely powerful tool in helping counter the problem of malnutrition in West Africa. This family lives in a village in southern Senegal. Moringa is part of their diet. They grow Moringa in their own garden and harvest leaves like other cultivated products. After the leaves are gathered, they are then washed and spread out on a cloth to dry. They are then placed into a mortar and crushed. Even the little ones help. The powder is then sifted like flour. Now it's ready to use. In this case, it's used as a spice over the evening meal. This is Moringa stenopetala. This is only known, as far as I know, from five uh, areas around Lake Turkana in northern Kenya and southwestern Ethiopia. Evolutionary botanist Mark Olson is a Washington University doctoral candidate who has traveled the world collecting 13 different species of Moringa. Every place I have been, 
in, in the tropics where they grow in the wild, local people use them. You know, this is everywhere from Madagascar to Namibia to the Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia area. The plant's makeup also contributes to its ability to thrive in some of the most arid areas of the world. So if we go ahead and, and uh, break off one of these, these roots, uh, we can see how full of water it is. That's what helps the seedlings get through uh, dry periods and survive to, to, to adulthood. The tree is not just full of water, it can also purify water, which can be a lifesaver. Because uh, a third to a quarter of the people on Earth, and it's about half of the people in the tropics, don't have dependable access to, to clean water to drink. To help remedy this access problem, the University of Leicester, England, is researching the coagulating properties of moringa seeds. They believe the seeds purify water better and less expensively than traditional methods. There's even been an entire full-scale uh, uh, running of a water purification facility in, in Tiolo, Malawi, uh, just using moringa seeds. Ground into powder form, just three tablespoons of moringa leaf powder can provide three times the vitamin A a child needs. Virtually all of his iron and calcium needs and all of the essential amino acids. These days, health workers, instead of using imported products to treat malnutrition, are using these leaves. It's accessible and indigenous. Fugli says one of the disadvantages of other forms of aid to combat malnutrition is that once the aid runs out, the people starve. Not so with Moringa. Through Moringa, we felt that this was a possible, local, low-cost, accessible solution which even after the training program in how to use it came to an end, the people could carry on by themselves. People like Blanche Sambu Diada, a midwife at Belfort Health Post who performs pre- and postnatal examinations at the clinic. Since I was pregnant with my baby, I've been taking it regularly, and I continue to take it, and I can attest to these women that I myself am a user of this product. We also advise them to plant it themselves at their home and to use it for the benefit of the entire family. So after a while, people are growing their own trees at their household and adding the leaves on a daily basis, and the entire family can benefit. Africa is not the only place where Moringa is working miracles. In India, it's called the drumstick tree. They are looking at the use of Moringa as a potential cure to blindness because it's loaded with vitamin A. Vitamin A deficiency can lead to blindness, deformities, and other congenital diseases. According to the World Health Organization, vitamin A deficiency is almost at epidemic proportions in many rural villages. In 20 villages in western India, Kansas-based Trees for Life is trying to fight this epidemic by helping the people plant and use Moringa. In India, I know that people take the seeds and they will sort of stir-fry them and they will get a vegetable that tastes somewhat like peanuts. Anne Hirsch is a professor of botany at the University of California, Los Angeles. Well, one of the things that impresses me most about Moringa is the fact that it has the full complement of essential amino acids that human beings need. There are eight of them that we cannot synthesize, so we have to get it from our food. In the developed world, we eat meat. In the developing world, meat is a rare commodity, or it's an extremely expensive commodity. Experts are surprised that Western businesses haven't exploited Moringa's commercial value in the developed world. The place for a plant like Moringa in this country would be most likely to people who follow a vegetarian diet. The protein could be processed and added to all sorts of different kinds of drinks or protein supplements that I know a lot of people purchase. But in Senegal, the people have more immediate needs for Moringa. The mother should take a spoonful of powder morning, afternoon, and night every day. This will help her produce more milk and improve her health through six months while she's nursing her baby. She should also mix a spoonful of powder in with the baby's formula.
We encourage pregnant women to start taking Moringa while they're pregnant, after they give birth, while they're breastfeeding the child, during the child's weaning period, and afterwards. And this way we find that preventing malnutrition is much, much better than curing it. And clinics like this one are making it very easy for mothers to get Moringa. Many of the clinics we work with are now producing their own Moringa leaf powder and stocking it and putting it up for sale within their own pharmacies. Mothers are now able to come to the clinic. If they want Moringa for the equivalent of three cents, they can walk away with a small sack of Moringa leaf powder for their child. According to Lowell Fugley, that three cent bag of Moringa will supply a child with all its nutritional needs for about three days. Even though the Moringa grows wild here, Fugley's not leaving anything to chance. This particular Moringa plantation was installed near the village of Kubalan in southern Senegal. We did this in collaboration with the women of the village. The women helped us plant the trees. We helped them put in wells and irrigation system for the gardening project. Fugley has even set up a Moringa processing plant to help larger numbers of people. You can seed Moringa in prepared beds every 10 centimeters or 3 inches. It's 100 plants per square meter. And once these plants reach a height of 3 feet, uh, a meter or less, you can cut them back to about 10 centimeters off the ground, harvesting the green matter, drying it, and then pounding it into leaf powder for use in your clinics or households. Once you've cut this back, the stumps will regrow, and eight weeks later, you can have another harvest. In this way, you can have continual harvesting, up to nine harvests every year. Which Fugley says produces about 650 tons per hectare, or two and a half acres. My own estimation is that one hectare of this intensive leaf cultivation can satisfy the vitamin A needs for up to 15,000 children. The goal is to make sure that this family and hundreds of thousands of others have a future. The idea to find a food, a perfect plant, that can satisfy people's hunger and give them all the protein nutrients that they need is of great importance. If I had set out to design a tree which would be of maximum benefit to mankind, I'd be hard put to do better than the Moringa Lipra tree. Next, Mort's cancer was too widespread for surgery, but it wasn't too late for him to try an alternative.